thank you so much for helping me figure out what to do on this turtle. This is the one y'all helped me build. So thanks again, guys. I have decided to go ahead and paint on a coat of um, gesso on this turtle to seal the wood. I don't know if that's going to make a difference necessarily in um, when I apply my paint, but I'm just going to try it. it. I mean, obviously this works really well with canvases to seal the canvas prior to applying paint, but I don't know if this will make a difference um, in my wood. I think it will. I think it'll give me a smoother surface. I'm just going to try it. I'm going to let that dry and then come back. All right, nice and dry. Okay, now time to paint. So what should I do first? All right, I'm going to use all Joanne paints for my ocean and Joanne paint and then a Dollar Tree paint for my sunrise slash sunset and I'm going to leave a blank spot here because I have a plan for the bottom. It's going to be light. It's going to be light. I have a cheapo brush and some water. The nice thing about this is that there's not a right way to apply the paint and there's not a wrong way to apply the paint. I just need to make sure to apply enough paint this time because I've tend to not use enough paint, then I don't get good coverage. These are all Joanne paints because I got them on sale, except for this white, which is really silver that I mixed with Floetrol and a little bit of silicone because I'm getting some cells that I didn't intend on, but they are kind of cool. This paint, when I mixed it, I did put silicone in it, S for silicone. So I am getting this, this, the cells kind of liking the structure of the ocean. It's not an angry ocean, it's a happy ocean. So we're gonna leave it at that and do my sky and I can blend some of this too. I had every good intention of starting with yellow because I wanted it to be more yellow. And then I added a touch of orange. Oh God, that's orange. Oh God, that's too much. That's too much. But then I kept mixing and blending and it, it turned out okay. Not great, but okay. I like it a lot. Okay, leave it. I'm gonna leave it to dry. I don't wanna touch it anymore because I'll mess it up. A little bit too much orange though. I like that much, much better. Dry. I let the paint dry and now I'm going to work mm. in a nautical chart somehow in the design and wait and see. Oh God, you scared me. My husband is a big joker. He snuck up on me and <clears throat> about scared the pee out of me. I decided to use this nautical chart from Padre Island for the bottom part of, um, of the turtle to act as kind of like the beach area. And what I'm doing is just marking off where, <clears throat> where the top of the chart is so that I know exactly where to put my Mod Podge because I'm going to be using a thin layer of Mod Podge. And I just put my Mod Podge in a squeeze bottle because it just makes it easier to apply. And then believe it or not, I'm going to let this Mod Podge dry completely before the next step. All right, here's where your iron comes in. So you want to put it on no steam. Don't put any water in it at all. And you want it on its hottest settings. And it's really funny that um, 
this is the only time I use my iron. <laughs> All right, so the Mod Podge is dry, except for this little valley in here. And so we're going to take the map that I cut out already. I'm going to overlap it a little bit. Make sure it's right where I want it. Make sure it's right where you want it. And a piece of parchment paper. And I'm going to do this in stages. I'm going to start in the middle just to anchor my map down. And we are going to iron it. This is the trick. We're going to iron it down. Just apply even, steady pressure. Don't stay in one spot too long. But what happens, the heat act reactivates the Mod Podge, the glue, and then you just, you know, test a couple of pieces to see if it's glued down and then go over your spots that you maybe have missed. This method works so well. The rest of this edge, I am going to take my rotary sander and sand that off. I used to use an X-Acto knife to cut the edges, and then I saw a YouTube channel somewhere um, to use my, a rotary sand or a piece of sandpaper to cut the edges, and it works 100% better. Using um, joint compound, this is a paste. What I'm going to do is put a little bit on my palette knife, and um, I want to add a I think some textured waves on here. Um, just a little bit of texture. This stuff was really dry. I wish that I had gone ahead and added a little bit of water and reactivated it, but it, it turned out okay. It turned out okay. That is really dry. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to put some in a, in a dish. And it did work out much, much better mixing with a little bit of water, which is the nice thing about the spackle compound is that you can reactivate it with a little bit of water. So I added another little row of big breakers. Chunky seafoam mix, and I've added some blue um, alcohol ink to it this time. And I'm going to add some of that chunky seafoam in this area here in blue. Try it and see what it looks like. <laughs> I really am loving this, oh man. I don't know. That's what it looks like. Blue it just adds another dimension to it. I don't want to. Oh wow! I almost dropped it. I don't want to get any on my map though. So I'm gonna cover just right here, just so I don't get any on there. Cause I'm gonna. I need to seal my map still. A really good clump there. Once I got the bubbles going, it was pretty easy from there. I loved blowing bubbles as a kid, and it's no different as, a, as an adult. This was really, really fun. I'm surprised how easy this is and how fun it is, too. It's just a fun, interesting way to add an additional layer of texture to your artwork. And I can credit Erica at Artist Till Death for this inspiration for sure. All right, I've got to let this dry probably a day. I do have my fan off because I don't want the fan to be blowing the bubbles. And I look like a Smurf. Seal this with 
polycrylic and then I'm going to put another layer of bubbles down but I want to do white bubbles. I'm using Minwax polycrylic and because it's water-based it does make the paper wrinkle up a little bit but the wrinkles flatten right out after it dries for a little bit. Once it's fully dry the, the wrinkles are gone. So three parts Mod Podge, one part dish soap. I'm not even on camera, am I? And I'm not going to measure exactly. I'm eyeball it. It's not an exact recipe, y'all. The dish soap is blue, but it does not make the bubbles blue. I promise. I gave my mixture a good shake in the jar, but then I also used my straw with um, a lid that I made from a sour cream container, plastic sour cream container, poked a hole in the middle for my straw because it just makes a lot less mess. And that's kind of like my little secret so that I don't have bubbles blowing everywhere. But this was super fun. And see, they're, they're, not, they're not blue, um, but I did forget one crucial step and that was to add white dye to my bubbles so that my bubbles would be white. They ended up drying clear, so lesson learned. The next morning when everything was nice and dry, I protected my chart again, added some liquid resin dye to my bubbles, and I think you can use alcohol ink, although that doesn't really work as, as well, I think. And then I had the brilliant idea, and I'm gonna do a separate, completely separate video on this, I had the brilliant idea of using my hand blender to try to make some bubbles. Let me tell you, this was super fun. It was like making um, whipped cream, but it did really, really create some cool foam. It was not as bubbly as I would have liked. So I let it sit a little bit and that did help to break up the micro bubbles and create some larger bubbles. And then I also used my straw again um, so I am definitely going to have to experiment with this a little bit because I have an idea. So that idea did not work like I wanted it to. So I'm going to salvage what I can. I'm going to still get some good bubbles. Still getting some bubbles. Cover that up. but they're not the airy structure like down here. So this was kind of a fail. Um, I think if I let it sit, it will, it will maybe go down and, um, you know, become more liquid again. So the hand blender just incorporated too much air and it's teeny tiny air bubbles. Very, very, very small. Although this would work maybe for defining a line. Um, like right here. Just defining that line instead of using paint, you could define that wave line. And then there's some bubbles that are sort of floating up to the top. Maybe it will work. I just wish there was enough 
so I could salvage bubbles just to finish. I did decide to go ahead and add some white bubbles on top of the the blue bubbles just to to add a I guess another layer. It just it gives it some depth. It's the ocean is multi layered and um, I don't know, it looks like a hot mess now, but trust me, when it dries, it's spectacular. Big. One big one. Okay. So I think I can salvage it so that I can go ahead and um, just finish this row here. not as big as that first couple of spoonfuls that I did when I was just blowing it by by um you know my my mouth rather than the blender but I can still use my straw and get some bubbles That is actually going to work. Just to help me out here. But I wouldn't do this again. I definitely would not do this again. It's just too thick. So maybe not blend it quite as much with the, um, the hand blender. All right, I need to figure out how I can salvage this mixture, though, because I don't want to just toss it. I think if I just wait, it'll go back down to liquid, and then I'm going to try something else with it to try to get um, more bubbles more quickly. So maybe this is just way too foamy. That was a fun process though. See, it's already turning liquid on the bottom. So it's settling, it's separating again. All right. That was fun though. That was fun. You don't know until you try what works and what doesn't. All right, I do have an idea though. I do have an idea. Let this sit because it seems like when it sits for a little bit, the bubbles are starting. the The small bubbles. So this is just like really, really fluffy, like whipped cream. 
but as it sits, it seems like the bubbles are sort of coming together and forming bigger bubbles. So I'm going to let this, I'm not actually going to let this sit and just see what happens. And if then if it goes back to being more fluid, then I can just blow it with a straw and, you know, call it a, a fail with the hand blender, but. Let's see what it does. There's still little. So let's just let it sit just like this. Fan is off. I do like this little group. This is the first group. I like this much better than this group, but then this, it got better at the end. So when I was blowing with the straw on the fluffy mix, it, uh, it got better, but that's tedious. I'm trying to avoid blowing with the straw. I want to do that every time, but I mean, it works, but I could use my air compressor. Okay, I'm going to stop and let it sit, and then we're going to come back. I don't know how much I will get out of it, but quite deep, and I think I'm going to put it on top of this blue. Got a boo-boo on my finger. Let's, um... I'm going to cover completely. Still want a little bit of that blue to show through. Maybe just, oops, maybe just along here. That was messy.
pop the big bubbles. Here's what I'm see. Nice little one. Still want the blue to show. I'm not gonna cover all of that blue. That's really cool though. Just one more time. See if maybe I can get some different little levels of color. Sure there. Okay, one more time. Pop the big ones. Maybe add a little bit more structure. All right, that's it lid back on and this is going to have to dry again so happy with these oh my gosh this is definitely a game changer i think next time i might do the white first and then put the blue on top Need to add a couple palm trees and like little islands. I think I want to put this one here with the palm tree, maybe a little one over here. Palette. I'm just going to do some simple palm trees. Oh, damn. I'm going to do that. Okay.
This is honestly, I think, my favorite part of this project is painting the swaying palm trees.
really so thrilled with how this how this turned out. Oh my gosh! But I need to put another coat of this Minwax Polyacrylic. Normally I use polyurethane um, just to have it be more water resistant like if somebody was going to put this outside but i do not want to put polyurethane on this i'm not sure how polycrylic will behave on top of the bubbles so i'm not going to put the polycrylic on top of on top of those because i just don't know i'm gonna have to do that on a test piece Washing my brush. I don't know if this is 100% clean or not. So I'm going to put another coat on here. And I'm going to do a test um, on a, I'm going to do a, a poly, oh, I can't talk today. A test of the polycrylic on a test piece of the bubbles that I have um, already prepared on this side. I just wanna seal this off one more time. And then I'm gonna add it up here. So. Really brings out the shine. Really like it. Brings out the kind of the grain in the color. If that makes sense. So stoked about this turtle. Look at that. My bubbles turned out great. They're nice and textured. Really, really happy with how this turned out. Thank you so much for helping me figure out what to do on this turtle. This is the one y'all helped me build. So thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe learned something new. Really happy with, I am really, really happy with the bubbles. The multiple layered bubbles. Super, super stoked with the texture too. So thanks again. Thanks for watching. Bye. See you next time. Like I've been painting today.